Hello, EP2150 at College of the North Atlantic. Welcome. This is Unit 1 to EP2150. It's an introduction to entrepreneurship. So throughout this class, I'm going to create uh, the PowerPoint slides with my audio over them. Uh, you'll see my uh, mouse cursor pointing around when I discuss important topics. And this is the way I will deliver the course. Uh, if you have questions on these videos, go to the discussion forums, post your question, and I will answer it. Or you can email your instructor the question, and your instructor will answer your question. Okay, And then if it's a, a question good for the whole class, uh, the instructor will post your question without your name and the answer to that question. Okay. Uh, also, I want you to know every student has an obligation to log in before every class into D2L, check your in the news items to see if there's any news. Uh, for example, today I uploaded the video recording of our first Zoom meeting, which covered the introduction to the class. So if you missed the first class, be sure to go into in the news, uh, click the video link and watch that video. It's from the very first class. Okay. Also, go into the discussion forums, see if students have posted any questions or if the instructor has posted anything new in the discussion forums. And keep an eye on Dropbox as well. Assignments and assignment due dates are in Dropbox for anything that's deliverable for the course. OK, so let's get started. Unit 1. The learning objectives uh, of, this, uh, of this unit are to explain the cultural diversity of entrepreneurship, Describe the important role that small business play in our nation's economy. Put failure into the proper perspective and explain how an entrepreneur can avoid becoming another failure statistic. Okay, so the world of the entrepreneur. Every month, US entrepreneurs, so American entrepreneurs, launch 500,000 new businesses. Every, sorry, every single month, every month. So you have 12 months, so that's 6 million new businesses get launched. Okay. Entrepreneurial spirit, the most significant economic development in recent history. Okay. And what they mean by that is the, the desire or the drive for individuals to start their own business. Okay. Studies show 12% of the adult population in the United States is actively involved in trying to start a new business. So that 12%, many of those have a job, but they have an idea in their mind. And it's either, you know, uh, from what they're already doing with their company, how can they do that on their own, or something totally different, and they want to be their own boss at some level. It doesn't mean everybody, all 12% are going to quit their job and become an entrepreneur and start their business. Many people use entrepreneurship as a way to get extra income. So they have a nine to five job or whatever their hours or their job are. And when they're finished their job, they go start and work on their other business. And maybe they do work for people in the evenings. All right. So for example, a business consultant, maybe he works for a consulting firm and he does the business plans for people in the evening. Uh, maybe on the weekends, uh, a guy who works as an accountant uh, goes and teaches karate to kids on the weekends and he has a little karate uh, dojo, a little karate school and teaches karate and makes money that way. That's an entrepreneurial activity. Okay. Entrepreneurial activity across the world, past examples. So uh, you can zoom up to this, it's a bit small, but it's a list of companies, uh, countries, not every country, but uh, it's broken into three different groups. Okay, Factor-driven economies, efficiency-driven economies and innovation-driven economies. Okay, And what this is is entrepreneurial activity around the world, uh, persons per 100 adults. So for every 100 people in each of these countries, this is a measure of how many people are doing some kind of activity, Okay, uh, entrepreneurial activity. So this group, factor-driven economies, factor-driven. So think of PESTLE. Things outside the individual's control, they have to react to and do something to earn a living for themselves. So if you look at the countries in this list of factor-driven, you have Algeria, Angola, Botswana, Egypt, Ethiopia, Ghana, Iran, you know, the list goes on. These are economies where uh, there's 
I guess you could say a very heavy pestle factor. Government regulations, government laws, wars, uh, corruption, all sorts of things where people have to take uh, earning income into their own hands. All right. And then you have another set of countries, uh, efficiency driven economies. And in this list, you have Argentina, Barbados, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Brazil, all the way down, Romania, Russia, South Africa. Okay, these are countries where people see we can improve things. Okay, we can make what we do more efficient. And so individuals take it upon themselves to start a business to make things better. Okay, so for example, over here in factor driven economies, the tallest one is about 42 people for every 100 Uganda. Okay, so for every 100 people you see, um, 18 to 64 years of age, for every 100 people, 42 of those people are doing some entrepreneurial activity. So if you're walking down the street in Uganda and you see 100 people as you walk by, 42 of those, of those people have, have some entrepreneurial activity happening. Okay, in efficiency driven economies, the tallest peak is Ecuador. And that looks to be about 27 people. So if you're in Ecuador, 27% 27 27 of people, or 27 out of every 100 people there, are doing some kind of entrepreneurial activity, generally uh, in some kind of efficiency driven manner to make things uh, better, faster, more efficient. Okay, and then over here you have innovation driven economies. And from here you have a list, it's not every country, but you have Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Finland, France, a lot of European countries, Italy, then you have Japan, Republic of Korea, Netherlands. Uh, United States, Canada would be in here, uh, it's not on the list, but the tallest peak in the innovation driven economies looks to be the United States, which is at the global average, okay, of about 14 or 13, yeah, global average 13, so United States. So if you're in the United States and you're walking down the city street and you see 100 people, on average, 13 of those people are running some kind of a business. They might also have a job, a regular job, but they have thir 13 of those people are doing something. And by innovation driven economies, it means something new is coming out. Okay? So it just, this graph just shows in every economy, there are a certain percent of people doing something. Okay? Either because they have no choice, factor driven, uh, they want to make things better, efficiency driven, or they want to make something new, innovation driven. Okay. Okay. Entrepreneurship friendly countries. So, which are what are the best countries to be an entrepreneur? Okay. Which nations provide the best environment for cultural or cultivating entrepreneurship? A recent study ranked 121 countries on the quality of the entrepreneurial environment use, using the Global Entrepreneurship and Development Index which includes a variety of factors that range from availability of capital, how to get money to start your business, workforce quality, what kind of employees can you hire to start your business, uh, to attitudes toward technology uh, uh, that's available. Uh, the maximum score would be 100. Okay, So in the United States, it's measured at 82.5. Okay, So even the best country still has areas to improve for entrepreneurship, but the United States ranks number one. Okay. Uh, Canada is very similar to the United States. It just ranks a little bit lower in score, 81.7. So this is the top 10. But you see out of 121 countries, from 1 to 10, the drop is already about uh, 14 points on that 100-point system. Okay, and then we go over to the worst countries to start a business. Okay, and you get uh, ranked 109, Madagascar. They got a score of 19.6, and it goes down... Uh, to the bottom, 13.8 uh, uh, points out of 100 Bangladesh. So this could be reasons like access to capital um, and, and many, many other factors of starting a business. Could be legal restrictions. It could be um, the spread of the population is so wide or access to technology is so difficult to start a business. Okay. So this is just a, a review of how it is to be an entrepreneur in some countries. It could be easier or it could be more difficult. Difficult. Okay, global entrepreneurship. Men are more likely to start a business than women. Okay, but that's changing. 
So the percent of women going into business has been increasing over the years. Entrepreneurs are most likely to launch a business between the ages of 35 and 44. Okay, and most entrepreneurial activity, most see entrepreneurial activity as a good career choice. Now, just think about this question, the middle one. Why do you think most entrepreneurs uh, who launch a business are between 35 and 44? Okay, what is it about that age? I'm just going to give you a second. I have two thoughts uh, on why that is. Okay, so say you're looking at somebody who's 65, thinking about starting a business, and somebody who's 35, thinking about starting a business. Who has more energy? Now, who can work harder later into the night? Who can get up earlier? Who can do a 12-hour day, several days in a row? Uh, you know, who has probably less responsibilities? Not to say if you're 35, you don't have children, but uh, who is trying and thinking of building something great for the future? The 35-year-old or the 65-year-old? Well, the 35-year-old, right? Now, if you take the other end of it, a 20-year-old versus a 35-year-old. Okay, who would you say has more energy? Well, the 20-year-old has more energy. But who has more work experience and business experience and maybe education and knowledge? The 20-year-old or the 35-year-old? So people between the ages of 35 to 44 are probably in that sweet spot of having a lot of knowledge, having a lot of work experience, seeing a lot of things, and having the energy to do it. Right. So that could be uh, some reasons why people 35 to 44 more likely to be entrepreneurs and they also see they want to build something great for the future okay what is an entrepreneur okay so this whole class is about entrepreneurship someone who creates a new business while facing risk and uncertainty for the purpose of achieving profit and growth by identifying business opportunities and gathering the necessary resources to take advantage of them okay so what could be some necessary resources well, knowledge for sure. You might have a good idea, but you don't have, know how to execute that idea. You need to bring somebody in that can help you. It could be an engineer, a doctor, it could be uh, some kind of a scientist, it could be a carpenter. You know, it could be any anything. All right. And also, the other necessary resource, capital. You need money. Okay. And then you need access to a market. So an entrepreneur is trying. Uh, and a need from people. This is from marketing. So an entrepreneur is trying to put all these things together to create a business. Now, this is a little, um, I guess, simple way to look at it. There are three kinds of, I guess, workers in the world. There's employees. They wake up, they go to work, they come home, and that's done. They wake up, they go to work, they come home, they get a paycheck. Okay. There are freelancers. A freelancer is somebody who doesn't go to a workplace uh, with a boss. They go around to many different companies and offer their services. Okay, you could be a freelancer graphic designer, and some companies aren't big enough to hire a graphic designer, and they only need a graphic designer a few hours a week every week. So a freelancer finds these businesses and offers his or her services, and maybe they have 10 or 20 clients, and it keeps them busy all the time. Okay, so they're like an entrepreneur, and they're like an employee. Okay, and then there's the actual entrepreneur. And they're trying to start something. And one thing I read a long time ago, the difference between a freelancer and an entrepreneur is an entrepreneur is trying to create something greater than themselves. Okay? So they're not just going around to 10 companies offering their services and being happy with that. They want to grow uh, their company. They want to get employees. They want to keep growing new clients. They want to assign and train these employees to do the work. Eventually, they hire a manager to come in and manage the employees, and the entrepreneur works on other areas to grow the business. Okay, so an entrepreneur, someone trying to build something greater than themselves. Okay. Okay. Characteristics of an entrepreneur. Okay. Desire for responsibility. Okay. They like to take things on their own shoulders, as an expression. They carry the load. Preference for reasonable levels of risk. They don't. They don't mind taking risks. They prefer not to take it. Nobody wants to uh, make a risk that they're going to lose. But they want to take smart risks that they think there's a high chance of succeeding. They're self-reliant. They don't want to rely on somebody else for a paycheck. Confident in their ability to succeed. So they know or they feel inside 
what they're doing is going to work. Determinated or the determined. Okay, they don't give up quick, quickly. They'll keep going for years. It could take three or five years to see a business become successful. Desire for immediate feedback. They want to see results. Okay, on the right side, high level of energy, future orientated. That means they're looking into the future. They don't care about they. The past for them is something to learn. Okay, not to dwell on. They see the future as an opportunity. Okay, and this is a necessity for entrepreneurs. Or in, sorry, uh, there's future orientated opportunity entrepreneurs. They see an opportunity and they take it. Necessity entrepreneurs. These could be people in a company who got laid off. The company got downsized, and now they have and they can't find another job. They have to go and find their own way to make money. And then there's serial entrepreneurs. Serial entrepreneurs are people who uh, continually start new businesses. Sometimes the business succeeds, they sell the business, they exit that business, and they start a new business. Sometimes the business fails and they just go on to the next one. Okay? Uh, they're skilled organizers. They know how to get people together. They know how to make, negotiate. Uh, they, they can put teams together to get things done for them. Because the entrepreneur knows he's trying to create something bigger than himself and he needs people. Okay, they value achievement over money. Maybe, maybe not. You know, some people, the achievement for some people could be money. They want to achieve a lot of money. But in general, entrepreneurs are trying to create something. Um, uh, I guess you could call, think of a business as like a living thing, and it's their baby. And they're trying to grow this baby into a strong adult. All right, so they're trying to build a business that uh, becomes very successful. Uh, maybe they're proud of employing a lot of people. They're proud of contributing to society with their business. Okay, but not always over money. For some people, it's just about the money. But these and these characteristics are in general. And an entrepreneur doesn't need to have every one of them, but they need to have many of them. Okay, entrepreneurs demonstrate a high degree of commitment. They're not quitters. Okay, tolerance for ambiguity. Okay, ambiguity. Ambiguity means things are unclear. And an entrepreneur can succeed in areas where things are unclear. Okay? Creativity. We all know creativity. Flexibility. Okay? And that's has something that's kind of connected to ambiguity as well. Flexibility. When the environment changes, they can change with it. So if the pestle factors, some of those change, they'll learn what the changes are and they'll just uh, uh, move with those changes. They're very flexible. Maybe they have employees and all of a sudden some of the employees quit. Uh, they don't give up. They'll start doing the work. They'll go find somebody else. Clients change. Client needs change. The entrepreneur adapts. Okay, so think of flexibility like adaptability. Resourcefulness. They, even if resources are limited, they can get the most out of what they have. Okay, they can motivate their team to do more. They can instill the same feeling they have about the future of their business into their team. Willingness to work hard and tenacity. They don't give up, which is very, uh, very close to commitment, but tenacity. Uh, not necessarily to say they're overly aggressive, but they're not going to back down because they're fighting for their business or their idea or their dream. Okay. Important qualities of entrepreneurs. So there's lots of things that create an entrepreneur. And you, you'll probably see many of these in the Entrepreneur Self-Assessment Survey, which you should complete uh, from Unit 1 and upload into Dropbox. So percent of an entrepreneur is saying vision is important. 76% of entrepreneurs say vision is important. That means looking into the future. What's going to happen in the future? So anticipating what's going to happen in the future. Passion, 73%. You have to be excited about what you do drive. They wake up in the morning and they can't wait to get started on their business. Or they don't even want to go to bed, they want to keep working on their business. Integrity. So integrity is very important because an entrepreneur can't do it by themselves. And having integrity allows the other people around the entrepreneur, whether it's clients or employees or contractors that the entrepreneur is working with or partners, integrity allows these other people to trust the entrepreneur. Innovation. 
Okay. Half, half of the entrepreneurs say innovation is important. That is ability to create something new. Okay. Risk taking 46%. So less than half say risk taking is an important quality because you don't need, you know, you don't need to go into a situation where you know nothing about throw money in and see what happens. That's just craziness. But risk taking is an important factor because you are in sometimes an ambiguous an uncertain situation. Resilience, not quitting, 42%. Proactive approach, that means not sitting around and waiting for something to happen, getting out and doing it. Relentless customer focus, so always thinking about your customers. I, I'm surprised it's only that, that 38% because without customers and without thinking about your customers, you have no business, right? So. Uh, I would say maybe there's a bit of misreporting here on the 38%, but I'm not going to argue with it. 38% of entrepreneurs cite customer focus as an important quality. And then ability to work with teams, 37%. Okay, So some entrepreneurs, they do it on their own, and they don't need a team. But really, if you look at it, your team is also your clients. Your team is your bank, your business partners, anybody giving you money. These are all your team. Right? So team is a very important quality, ability to work with this team. Entrepreneurship. A notable characteristic of entrepreneurs is diversity, diversity of the entrepreneur. That means anyone, regardless of age, race, gender, color, national origin, or any other characteristic can become an entrepreneur, although not everyone should. So when I was 12 years old, I got my first job. I didn't quite have a boss and it was delivering newspapers and the distributor would come drop the newspapers off I would take them and go house to house selling the newspapers and I was 12 years old I didn't know what I was doing I would go to the house one time if they weren't home I'd never come back to that house for that week and my sales were never as good as my friend who told me about this job and way to get money so this guy came to my house I was in my bedroom and I remember he didn't have he didn't want to tell me face to a 12 year old kid that he was going to get fired so he told my mom so at 12 years old I got fired um, I had no rights in the job because I was an independent contractor so in the way I was like a mini entrepreneur trying to make some money uh, and that was the first time I got failed so at 12 you can go out and start a business just have your parents permission and do it in a safe way okay benefits of entrepreneurship create your own destiny your future all right so you you Create it, not your employer, not anybody else. You create it. Make a difference to the community or your country. Reach your full potential of what you're capable of. Financial rewards and profits. Entrepreneurs are the richest people in the world. Okay, they are the richest people in the world. If you look, you, you can say, how do, how do you say? It? Bill Gates is an entrepreneur. He owns the company, or he did own the company, Microsoft. Okay. Uh, Steve Jobs was the entrepreneur along with um, uh, Steve Wozniak who created Apple okay they were the entrepreneurs Wozniak was the inventor the technical guy but Steve Jobs went around banged on door to door to door to banks to get the money he promoted the product he got the product sold he had the entrepreneurial vision but he had the best partner in the world in this one of the smartest men in the world uh, uh, Steve Wozniak okay so the richest people in the world are entrepreneurs. Okay, Con contribution to society and recognized for your efforts. So uh, a lot of entrepreneurs do great things for the world. All right, contribution to society. Okay, uh, do what you enjoy and have fun doing it. So could you imagine somebody said to you, "What do you love the most?" Here's the plan for you to make a lot of money doing what you love the most. We would all go crazy for that opportunity. And that's what successful entrepreneurs can enjoy. But again, it's not for everyone because there are risks and you are taking a lot of your time, a big chunk of your life to go into this unknown area. So you need that quality uh, to go for it. Okay, disadvantages of entrepreneurship. So why don't some people go into entrepreneurship? Uncertainty of income. There's no guarantee you're going to make money. You start a business and a few years in and you're broke. Okay, your wife's going to kill you. Your mom and dad are going to say, maybe you should come work for us or maybe you should go get a regular job because you're 28 years old 
and we're not giving you an allowance anymore. Go get a regular job, okay? Risk of losing your investment. You could have saved up a lot of money and lose it all, okay? Long hours and hard work, lower quality of life until the business is running well, unless you are lucky. Your parents let you live with them. They fund you. They see you through the hard times. Or you have a spouse, a husband or wife who's rich. Okay? Uh, somebody made the joke to me uh, several years ago. The best business skill is a rich father or mother. Okay? And maybe the sex, second best business skill is a rich husband or wife. All right? So having this funding removes a lot of uh, risk for you. Okay? And then high stress level because everything's on you. You're the entrepreneur. Everybody is looking at you. Okay. Sources of stress for entrepreneurs. Fear of losing their business. 54% of entrepreneurs have this feeling, small business owners. Repaying personal debt because small businesses, when they start, a lot of times the debt is personal. They put up their own money or they take a loan. Losing clients. Uh, bringing in new business, getting new customers. So sales skills is very important in entrepreneurship. And if you think of uh, Steve Jobs from Apple, he had some of the best sales skills of anybody ever to exist. All right. My health and well-being, because you're sacrificing all your time. Maybe you're not eating well. Maybe you're not exercising. Maybe you're not seeing your friends. So your mental well-being uh, and your health can suffer. Being on call 24-7. So you need to have the skill of turning off your phone and not checking emails for certain blocks of the day to let yourself rest, okay? But being on call 24-7 is a problem for many small business owners. And repaying personal, uh, repaying business debt. So the first one was personal debt and then business debt. Okay, disadvantages, disadvantages of entrepreneurship continue. So there's lots. So uncertainty of income, risk of losing your investment, long hours, hard work, quality of life until the business gets established, high stress level, complete responsibility, and discouragement. Not every day is going to be a great day when you're an entrepreneur. Motivation. How do entrepreneurs get motivated? Entrepreneurs are seen as heroes. That's pretty motivating if people look up to you and say, that's a great business person. Entrepreneurship education. So getting an education in business. So what we're doing right now, learning about entrepreneurship, is a first step. Having done your HR, your marketing, and your accounting are great first steps. Demographics and economic factors. Shifting to a service economy. So a service economy gives a lot of opportunities um, to create businesses. So delivery businesses, for example. Whoever invented the, um, uh, what, what are those little motorcycles? I forget the name here in, in Doha that delivers food to restaurants. That was a great idea. Okay. Technology and communication advances. So the internet, uh, mobile phones, texting, SMS, WhatsApp, all that stuff. The internet, cloud computing, mobile marketing. Independent lifestyle. Okay, so being able to do it um, on your own. I, I have a friend in Canada. He does marketing for companies and he spends six months of the year, not in Canada, but in Costa Rica. He can work from anywhere in the world and do his marketing for the clients. He comes back during the summertime, meets clients, they all like him, he's, they're happy, and then in the winter he disappears again. And international opportunities. If you can do something well in one country, there are other countries similar to your country where you can go and copy what you're doing and do it there. Okay. Cultural diversity. So before we said mostly it's men who do entrepreneurship, but that's changing. Young entrepreneurs. Okay. Women in entrepreneurship, minority-owned businesses, immigrant entrepreneurs, and part-time entrepreneurs. I'm going to talk about um, immigrant entrepreneurs in a little detail. So there's a global factor uh, called globalization, where it's people moving from one country to another. And this is increasing, okay? But one thing that happens in a lot of countries and it's, it, it, is when somebody from another country moves to your country, they don't know uh, a lot of people. They don't have a lot of connections. Okay, and sometimes it's difficult for them to get a job. So they have no choice but to start their own business. So if you look at Canada, Canada has very high immigration, okay, every year. But Canada, a lot of these immigrants that come, they come with um, 
a husband or a wife or older children, and they might have difficulty getting a job. So they take it on themselves to start their own business. Okay, uh, and and um, immigration, immigrant entrepreneurs is, is driven a lot by globalization, and also um, the difficulty sometimes in adapting to a culture to get a job in a regular office. And that's just a reality, right? Language barriers, cultural barriers, uh, insecurities, these sorts of things. So a lot of times uh, immigrants going to countries start businesses. And one of the reasons they go to a country to begin with anyway is for a better life. And as we discussed before, what there's no better way to start a better life with the potential of high income from a successful business. So a lot of immigrants are chasing the dream. And part-time entrepreneurship. You can have your job and do stuff on the side. Okay, so there's home-based businesses. You just run it from your home. Family businesses, the family runs it. Co-entrepreneurs, uh, co co which are couples, husband, wife, doing a business together. Can be risky because you're living together and now you're working together and then you want to kill each other later. I'm just joking, but uh, co-preneurs, they had to be very careful about their work-life balance uh, and being around so much that they need they need a little bit of time to themselves. Uh, corporate cast off, so they got laid off. Corporate dropouts, they quit their job. And then retired people. So all of these people uh, can be entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurship age range, so the age groups. Okay, so average index of entrepreneurial activity by age group. So um, the percents are uh, based on an index. Uh, so, so it's not 0.34%, but um, just look at it this way. 55 to 64%, 0.34 in the index are entrepreneurs. That means there's more of those than 0.32, more of those than 35 to 45, 44, uh, 0.32, and then 0.25. So younger people are less likely to be entrepreneurs, and often that's just because of knowledge and skills or uh, capital that they have, money that they have, right? Importance of a small business. Make up 99% of the 28 million businesses in the United States, 99%. So the other 1% are government owned uh, businesses, okay? Employ 50% of US private sector works, workers, workforce. Create more jobs than big business. Created 65% of new jobs in the last decade. Produced 46% of US private GDP. Account for 47% of business sales. Create 16 times more patents per employee than larger companies. So patents being inventions, okay? So zipper, light bulb, FM radio, laser, air conditioning. These were all invented um, by entrepreneurs. Okay, small business by industry sector. So the service industry, 55% of entrepreneurs are in the service industry. Okay, and that, that's providing services to other businesses or to other consumers. Uh, and again, food delivery, graphic design, those are services. Okay, uh, t almost 13% are in construction, 4.5 manufacturing, 5.4 wholesale business, 11.7 retail, and 9% finance, insurance, and real estate. Failing perspective. So entrepreneurs discouraged by prospect of failing. Failing, a natural part of the creative process. So entrepreneurs, a good entrepreneur doesn't see a failure as a negative thing. A good entrepreneur sees a failure as a learning opportunity of how not to do something. Okay, and most entrepreneurs need to fail to eventually become successful. Successful entrepreneurs learn to fail intelligently, manage risks and consequences. So when they do fail, they don't get destroyed and lose all their money and all the respect of everybody. Uh, they understand how to get out of that business safely. Okay, so the small business failure rate. So we have here six different years of data. So if you look at the kind of the, I'm not sure what color this is, uh, um, I don't know what it is called, uh, lilac. Okay, 2010. So here, okay, after the first, as soon as you start your business, there's no failure. You just started your business. 
after year one, you're almost at 10% of the businesses after one year failed. Year two, you're up to about 22%. And by year three, you're at about 32%. So if you started a business in 2010, that was the failure rate percentages. What's interesting though, let's look at this one. The line that had the highest failure rates, okay, is this orange color, 2008. 2008 businesses, if you started in 2008, your failure rate was almost 20%. Okay, then by year two, it was almost 30%, and it had some of the highest failure rates going up. Okay, can anybody remember what happened in 2008? Okay, we had a major recession, the world economy crashed. So, businesses that happened to start during the crash, they had a very hard time of it. All right, but if you look, at this chart, the ones that managed to survive through that crash, their percentages by year four were almost the same as everybody else. Okay, so the ones that were running their business uh, very smartly, or had some luck, or had extra capital, saw it through just as almost as well as everybody else. Okay, so these numbers are very closely lined up except for 2008 and a little bit of uh, 2005, all right? Okay, avoiding disadvantages of small business failure. Okay, know everything about your business, build a realistic business model, test it, develop a solid business plan. That's so important, a business plan. Understand financial statements and forecasting. So your accounting classes are important if you wanna become an entrepreneur. Manage financial resources, so the money you have, or your access to capital, learn to manage people effectively. Okay, your employees, your partners, contractors that you have helping you. Set your business apart from the competition. If you're gonna be like everybody else, a potential customer is just gonna ask, why should I choose you? Don't let them ask that. Make them say, I want to choose you because you've set yourself apart from the competition either by quality, by price, by speed of delivery by features of your products, things they want, by your communication to them, that they trust you, set yourself apart in your business and maintain a positive attitude. Conclusion. Entrepreneurs, important part of the free enterprise system. So important part of the economy. Diverse, talented people represents a cross section of society. That was the many different groups, age, race, gender, all that stuff able to enhance profitability of their business by acquiring more knowledge and experience. So they're continually improving. And we are done unit one. Congratulations for making it through. These are some links to help with entrepreneurship, uh, creating uh, winning business ideas. Uh, uh, Qatar Development Bank has a page on starting businesses, Qatar and entrepreneurship. Who is who an entrepreneur, entrepreneurs and business people. So these are some profiles of entrepreneurs in Qatar. And the Qatar uh, Business Incubation Center. That's a place where if you have a good idea and they like the idea, they will help you uh, succeed in your business. All right. You now know more about entrepreneurship than 90% of the world's population. Okay. So thank you for... Uh, Coming, going through unit one with me, and next class um, we'll do unit two. So make sure you follow all this, you go into D2L, do a discussion, ask some questions, do the entrepreneurship survey, and we will meet again for next class. Okay, have a great day. Bye-bye, everyone.